immigration. You know, Mexico keeps bringing illegal immigrants. And I was thinking, you know, I had one thought. I was like, if anybody knows anything about illegal immigration, it's Donald Trump. And I think as president, the first thing he should deport is whatever that is on top of his head. Like, just send it back into the wilderness with its family. I'm pretty sure it was made in Mexico. And what made me think it was a reality show, other than my friend telling me it was, uh, what made me think it was a reality show is the way he announced it. Like usually when you make an announcement, you want to do it, you want to have a connection. Let it be symbolic. Like I think of Dr. King when he did the I Have a Dream speech, went to Washington, D.C., stood in front of the Lincoln Monument. You know, I think of uh, Barack Obama when he announced his presidency, went to the old Capitol in Chicago, you know, where Lincoln announced his presidency. It was historic. Even Jeb Bush went to Florida where he was governor for eight years and announced his presidency. You know, there was a connection. Why was Donald Trump on the escalators? What was this? <laughs> Me and my best friend just kept trying to figure out what grocery store is he at? What grocery store? Was that a super target? Is he about to announce his presidency at a super target? He's like, nah, nah, that's a Walmart. That's a Walmart. The reason why he was confused because he saw a sign that said everyday low prices right behind him. I mean, he's confused. But I mean, like, I, the second part of the, the Mexico speech was really thought-provoking. He was like, you know, Mexico keeps bringing uh, criminals and rapists. Keep bringing criminals and rapists, and we need to do something about it. Which I agree with, you know, because Bill Cosby does not need the competition. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how many women? Like, how, how many? It's like there were three of them that came out just two days ago. They're coming out in bulk at this point, you know? Like, I'm starting to understand why this man sat down when he did stand-up. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Like at this point, the only number greater than the number of women accusing Bill Cosby are the number of Republicans running for president. Where are these people coming from? Where are these people coming from? Like I feel like we should put them all on Tinder and just swipe left or swipe right. Just, can we do that? But I mean like, you know, a lot of people are divided, you know, and everybody's trying to get help. You know, like Jeb Bush, I feel sorry for him. He's probably getting bad advice from his brother on how to give a speech. He's like, okay, uh, when, you, when you do your speech, you want to say, uh, I care about the American people. When America cries, I cry. When America's hurt, I hurt. When America farts, I smell it. <laughs> sure, George, I'll say that. I'll say that. Or Hillary's probably getting help from Bill, you know? But I got a feeling he's probably using late 90s tactics to help him. He's like, okay, Hillary. Uh, when those cameras are on you, I want you to look that camera in the eyes. You hold your press conference and you say, I did not have sexual relations with my email account. I want you to do that. Sure, Bill. Sure, sure. I'll do that. It's crazy. Then, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, there's so many things that people are divided about. You know, the same Trump is going up in the polls. Pretty soon he's going to have to choose a vice president. I think he should do it like his Celebrity Apprentice show. You know, I think you should have just different famous people trying out for the show. Like, I would love to see Eddie Murphy trying out for VP. I think he would get excited. He'd be like, it's going to be great. It's going to be fabulous. It's going to be wonderful. You're going to be president. I'm going to be vice president. And in the morning, I'm making waffles. <laughs> sexual chocolate. It's going to be sexual chocolate. So if you're white and I'm black, so it would be like sexual white chocolate. <laughs> Maybe Al Pacino would be good. You know, Al Pacino's really tense, you know? I feel like him and Trump would probably be going back and forth. He'd be like, oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, a lot of people think you're an idiot. I got to be honest. So do I. So do I. <laughs> oh, I'm out of order. I'm out of order. You're out of order. That thing on top of your head is out of order. This whole campaign is out of order. Maybe Dave Chappelle. I think Dave Chappelle, if you want to get the young vote, be like, I'm Dave Chappelle from the Chappelle Show. I need this job because I'm broke, 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 broke. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Or maybe Kevin Hart would be good. I can see Kevin Hart. Boom. Okay. Give him people. Don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. Okay, first of all, I don't understand why people don't think I can be uh, BP. I don't understand. Because I told my, my fiance, I told my girlfriend, I was like, I'm thinking about being BP. She's like, oh my God, Kevin. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Don't do it, Kevin. Oh my God. No, 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 no. I was like, uh, I don't understand what the problem is. First of all, the only thing people would find out is a dude on myself in the sixth grade. That's why I said, say it with my chest, dude on myself in the sixth grade. You know, the worst thing about that was this girl who kept teasing me with the rest of the class. I'm like, Kevin, is that dude? Kevin, is that dude? When I say Kevin, you say dude. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. I think it would be a great show. I think it would be a great show. One thing is we're, we're all divided right now, you know, 
we got the same-sex marriage, Confederate flag, and I got to be honest with the Confederate flag. At first, I was for taking it down, you know. But as I thought about it, I was like, no, it's probably not a good idea. Now, hear me out. This is mostly for my people, all two of you. Um, <laughs> think about it. You know, some racism is good for you. Let me finish. Some racism is good for you because they're not. If they take down every Confederate flag in America, there's gonna be a lot of black people accidentally walking in on KKK meetings. Like, I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't see the flag. Y'all didn't have your flag out. Y'all didn't have your flag out. It's not my fault. I didn't know. Matter of fact, I came in here to warn y'all that there was a cross burning and somebody yelled a couple of blocks down, but it's all starting to make sense right now. It's all starting to make sense. White power, I don't know if y'all are still saying that. I can't remember getting upset. Skeeter, close the door. There's colors in here. <laughs> We're divided. Even the Rachel, uh, Rachel Dolichel, the white lady who pretended to be black. This was a first for me. You understand? This was a first for me. A white person who wanted to be black. You know, because it's true what they say. You know, nobody wants to be black when the cops come, right? Nobody wants to be black when the cops come. But this lady was committed. She was voted the head of the NAAC, NAACP in Washington, D.C., where we had the first black president. So we had the first black president and the first black white lady trying to be black. You know what I'm saying? It was amazing. And I was upset, uh, not because she was trying to be black, but because I had applied for the same job and my feedback was I wasn't uh, black enough. So I uh, kind of hurt this person. That's what I don't want to talk about. Then, you know, I saw the interview she did on the Today Show. Matt Lauer asked her, a lot of people got upset, but he asked her, uh, how do you describe yourself? She said, I identify as black. I was like, wow, I was impressed. I was like, is that easy? You, you switch races like that? Wow, all the stuff Michael Jackson did, like that, it's that easy. That's all he had to do, the whole time, that's all he had to do. I was like, you know, I'm gonna try that the next time I have an opportunity. Sure enough, got pulled over by the cop for speed. He didn't even have to come to my door. I yelled out the window. I identify as white and drove off. <laughs> Guess what I'm saying is I'm a white man. Uh, I should've told you why well, I might have to cut this short. Uh, but yeah, you know, I understand a lot of people <laughs> that are really divided. You know, like right now, uh, this whole ISIS thing. You know, a lot of people upset about that. You know, I, I, I'm announcing my candidacy for president. And I have a solution for ISIS. That's right. That's right. Two people. I got two votes. That's all I need. That's all I need. It puts me right behind Ben Carson. That's all I need. But I, I, got, a, I got a solution. From now on, when they do the hostage negotiations with ISIS, I'm going to let Liam Neeson answer the phone. You know, I don't have any money, but what I do have is a certain set of skills that might prove themselves very dangerous for someone like you. What's up? Yes, I can also save you 15% by switching to Geico. <laughs> but ISIS might not fall for it. ISIS might be like, come on, Liam, we've seen your movies. Taken one, taken two, taken three. Every year your family gets kidnapped. We're starting to question your certain set of skills. <laughs> then I thought, maybe let him have Peter Griffin from Family Guy. I think he would just annoy them. They'd be like, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, Peter Griffin here. Uh, was wondering if you guys could uh, reboot my computer. We are not tech support. This is ISIS. Do not call again. <laughs> You should have, Ahmed, you should have. You know, maybe we got off to the wrong start. Maybe I should have started with an ISIS breaker. Yeah, <laughs> see what I did there? Hello? Hello? And if that doesn't work, let him have Jerry Seinfeld. I think he would annoy them just with all the questions. Hey, what's the deal with ISIS? I mean, how'd you come up with that name? I mean, Taliban, that's a scary name. Al Qaeda, that's a scary name. ISIS is basically the word is twice. <laughs> I mean, who came up with that? Was there some guy sitting around going, the name of our group is, is, is? That's it! That's the name of our group, is, is! Of course, you had to call it ISIS to make it official. Oh, you don't have to take my word for it. Even Chris Rock agrees. Chris Rock gets on the phone. Everybody's talking about ISIS. Oh, ISIS gonna get me. ISIS gonna get me. What is I gonna do? Is it just me? Or does ISIS sound like a bonnet? ISIS is gonna be good today. ISIS is gonna be good. <laughs> Sounds like a line from the movie to help. ISIS is good. ISIS is kind. ISIS is pretty. <laughs> if that doesn't work, if that doesn't work, I say let him have Bill Cosby. 
They hear me out. Is it too soon? <laughs> let him use his deceptive powers for good. You know, let him invite Isis over for dinner. Be like, yes, leave no. all. I wanted to have you people over for some dinner and some dessert. You know, we're going to have something I like to call quelo. Some mixture of quaaludes and jello. Who's first? Next thing you know, Isis wakes up, wakes up tied up in front of the White House, confused. I thought, Ahmed, how did we get here? How did we get here? Barack comes out the White House. Uh, uh, Isis. Uh, have, have you decided to turn yourselves in? Uh, no, we are not turning ourselves in. We did not do this to ourselves. Uh, how'd you get here? Uh, well, we were having quail with Mr. Bill Goosby. Uh, say no more, say no more. Last week he turned in Al Qaeda, did the same thing. So if you vote for me, I'll get rid of ISIS. I think it's a good plan. Uh, speaking of which, I know there's a lot. I know there's a lot that divides us. You know, a lot of people want to stay in touch with their roots. You know, it's the reason why, you know, some people want to stay in touch with their, their African roots, so they name their child Shaniqua. It's understandable. It's understandable. You know, some people, you're, you're in, a, in a racial relationship. One of you is Hispanic, the other is African American, you want to combine both cultures, so you want to name your child Taco Nisha. I understand that. I understand that. You can have your Taco Nisha. Uh, where I'm drawing the line at, people, is when we start naming our children after medicinal products, because this is what I saw at Stonecrest Mall. It's a woman talking to her children. Uh, yelling at her children at the food court. Ah, uh, Humera! Ah, uh, where's Zimbalto and Zarelto? Y'all need to come on out the bathroom now. And where are the twins? Ebola and Crayola? Come on, stop touching people! Stop touching people! We didn't know your name was gonna become a deadly virus. 